The Spanish Inquisition has become synonymous with being ruthlessly questioned beyond reason. The Spanish Inquisition lasted just under 400 years, and its impact on society can still be seen today in modern Spain. Studies have shown that areas most affected by the Inquisition appear to be poorer, more religious, and less educated 200 years after the Inquisition finally ended. To learn more about this troubling period in Spanish history, join us as we go into more detail about the Spanish Inquisition. First, it's important to establish that the Spanish Inquisition wasn't entirely unexpected. Inquisitions became a judicial procedure in 1184 when Pope Lucius III required bishops to investigate claims of heresy with judicial inquiries. The decree was enforced with varying degrees of vigor, with some dioceses foregoing to introduce the doctrine. The papacy gradually assumed control over the process while allowing local bishops to lead inquisitions. Around 1450, the first handbook of inquisitorial practice was written, and common procedures were put in place. By 1252, these procedures included the torture of ardent heretics. In 1307, the use of torture in religious inquiry was employed when King Philip IV of France accused the Knights Templar of heretical behaviors, including devil worship, spitting on the cross, corruption, financial fraud, and homosexuality. King Philip was probably motivated by the huge debt that he owed the now rich and powerful Templar Knights but the knights were nonetheless rounded up and accused of heresy. The knights were tortured using what would become common inquisitorial techniques, including starvation, isolation, being suspended by the wrist, stretched on a rack, and having their feet burned with hot oils or flames. The techniques proved to be successful for Philip, and within weeks, he managed to get hundreds of Templars to confess to false charges, at which point he would seize their assets for the crown. During the 14th century, the Christians in Spain were more concerned with displacing the Muslims than with seeking heretics within their own faith. They were conducting campaigns to capture territory in the Iberian Peninsula occupied by Muslims. The Reconquista began in the early 800s but didn't start in earnest until around 1118 when Alfonso I of Aragon captured the Moorish capital of Zaragoza in northeast Spain. Alfonso's descendants continued to attempt to reconquer Muslim territories until Alfonso VIII was defeated by the Almohad Caliph Abu Yusuf Yaqub al-Mansur, after which he sought more support outside of Spain. In 1212, he won the backing of Pope Innocent III, and the forces of Aragon, Navarre, Portugal, and Castile came together to oust the last serious Islamic threat in Spain the same year. Next, the Spanish Christian Church set its sights on Andalusia. The Reconquista lasted until 1340, when Portuguese and Castilian forces defeated a final significant Muslim incursion. The Reconquista had instilled a desire for religious uniformity in the Spanish and laid the path for what was to come. During the Reconquista, Spain's Jewish population had grown, and with the Muslims expelled from the region, the Jewish communities soon became targeted by the ongoing Christian zeal. Jews were increasingly pressured to convert to Christianity or face religious persecution. Those who did not convert were killed, but those who did were still viewed with suspicion and faced prejudice. Many forced converts continued to practice Judaism in secret, and soon Jewish converts were labeled as Muranos, a derogatory Spanish term for pig people, and were denounced as a greater threat to Christianity than those who refused to give up their Jewish faith. After the marriage of Ferdinand II and Isabella in 1469, which united Aragon and Castile, the Muranos were publicly charged with being a danger to Christian Spain. By 1478, Pope Sixtus IV issued a public decree called a Papal Bull, which authorized the Catholic sovereigns to allow inquisitors to address the perceived issue. The Spanish monarchs used this order to cement their regime and expand their own power in the name of the Church. Historians speculate that King Ferdinand II may have insisted on the papal bull by threatening to remove Spanish troops from Rome, where they had been placed to guard Rome from a Turkish attack. The monarchy intended to use the Inquisition to gain religious uniformity, but also wealth, property, and power, since they could weaken familial ties and confiscate property of those found guilty. Much in the same way King Philip IV of France had destabilized the Knights Templar. The first two inquisitors, 
Miguel de Murillo and Juan de St. Martin were named in 1480, and in 1481, the first act of faith, or auto de fe, was held. The autos de fe were public ceremonies in which the accused were judged and sentenced, and the first occurrence resulted in six people being burned alive. The autos de fe were attended by large crowds that included royalty, and a festive and ritualized atmosphere was encouraged. When Pope Sixtus IV heard of the severity of which the Inquisition was being carried out, he issued a new papal bull that prohibited the extension of the Spanish Inquisition into Aragon. During 1483, many Jews were expelled from Andalusia, despite the Inquisition only applying to Christian heretics. The Jewish people were likely forced to convert and were then accused of heresy so they could be tried or expelled. Again, Pope Sixtus IV attempted to curb the flagrant abuse of the Spanish Inquisition, but after Ferdinand threatened to separate his Inquisition from the authority of the Catholic Church, Sixtus was forced to rescind his reservations. On October 17, 1483, Tomás de Torquemada was appointed the Inquisitor General of Aragon, Valencia, and Catalonia. Torquemada was essentially the head of the Inquisition in Spain and had the authority to name his own deputies and counselors. The Inquisitions themselves were heavily stacked against the accused. Anyone could indict anyone, and evidence of heresy could be a minor issue, such as no smoke coming from the chimney on the Sabbath or buying vegetables and not meat before Passover. People were encouraged to name others, often as a way to spare themselves. The accused was required to testify but was not told who had testified against them or even what the charges were in some cases, and they were not allowed a lawyer or any assistance. No witnesses would testify on behalf of the accused for fear of being hailed as a heretic themselves. If the accused refused to testify, that was taken as proof of guilt. The inquisitorial court traveled throughout Spain and conducted the trials after Catholic Mass. First, they would explain what constituted heresy and encourage members of the congregation to confess to transgressions as a way of escaping punishment and torture. If anyone did come forward, they were then forced to accuse others of heretical behavior. The well-educated inquisitors would often confuse the accused and trick a confession out of the fearful suspect, as they usually had extensive knowledge of the Bible and asked deliberately confusing and leading questions. Once you were accused of heresy, you could be held until a satisfactory confession was given, and in some cases, people were imprisoned for years. Due to the earlier edicts of Pope Innocent IV in 1252, inquisitors were authorized to use torture to get a confession. However, any admission given under torture had to be repeated in court. The Spanish inquisitors took full advantage of these allowances. They ensured that the methods used to extract the confessions were horrific enough that those in prison for heresy would rather confess to false charges in court than return to the custody of the inquisitors. Torquemada's name was soon synonymous with brutal fanaticism, and he was feared throughout Spain. He used torture to terrorize his victims and his reputation aided him in obtaining confessions and accusations from the targeted communities. Fueled by religious righteousness, Torquemada helped the Catholic monarchs solidify their absolute rule. The inquisitors used various methods to extract confessions. They would often starve their victims, force them to consume vast quantities of liquids, or put heaps of burning coals onto their bodies. But even these methods were too tame for some. They reintroduced the old techniques used during the medieval inquisition, called strapado, in which a prisoner's arms were tied behind their back with rope, which was then strung over a brace in the ceiling. The rope was tightened using a pulley, and the victim's hands were forcibly raised until they were suspended from the rope. Forcing the prisoner's arms up behind their back would be enough to cause the shoulders to dislocate. Still, the inquisitors would sometimes jerk the prisoner up and down or add weights to their feet increasing the pain in the hope that the victim would confess to heresy. They also employed a rack, dislocating the suspect's joints and causing agonizing pain. Occasionally, the rack was tightened to such an extent that their limbs were eventually torn off. Other prisoners were forced to endure watching their inmates undergo torture, which was often enough to extract a confession. The punishment for heresy was usually not as painful as the questioning. While in the rack or hanging by strapado, Inquisitors would usually add to the prisoner's suffering by using torture devices like heated metal rods or pincers, thumbscrews, 
and other devices intended to inflict pain and mutilate the victim, the only stipulation being that they could not draw blood. After a heretic had confessed, they were often forgiven after they had performed a penance. These penances could range from whipping to going on a pilgrimage to wearing several heavy crosses. However, not everyone who confessed was so lucky. In under Torquemada, it is estimated that around 2,000 people were burned alive at the stake. Those who didn't confess were held indefinitely, usually dying before their final sentencing. In 1492, Torquemada urged Ferdinand and Isabella to issue a proclamation declaring that Spanish Jews must choose between exile or baptism. This decree resulted in over 160,000 Jews being expelled from Spain. When Cardinal Jimenez de Cisneros was named as the new Grand Inquisitor in 1507, Spanish Muslims were targeted with the same ferocity as the Jews, and Islam was officially banned in Spain by 1526. Just as the church had gone after Jewish converts, Muslim converts, known as Moriscos, were persecuted, and by 1566, Philip II outlawed the Morisco culture. The Moriscos suffered the same persecution and accusations as the converted Jews, and by 1614, around 300,000 Moriscos had been driven out of Spain. Next in the firing line was the newly emerging Protestant faith, and any foreigner thought to be promoting Protestantism was promptly dealt with. With most other religions eliminated in Spain, prominent Roman Catholics became a target, and several wealthy and influential Roman Catholics were accused and imprisoned for heresy. The Inquisition spread to South America with the conquistadors. It remained a very real threat in the Spanish colonies until the mid-1700s. However, somewhat ironically, the popularity of witch trials that swept through Europe and America did not catch on in the Spanish world due to the ongoing Inquisition. The Inquisition finally came to an end when Napoleon conquered Spain in 1808 and ordered the Inquisition to be abolished. When Napoleon was defeated in 1814, King Ferdinand VII tried to reinstate the Inquisition but faced a fierce rebellion. The French government stepped in to overcome the revolt, but only after Ferdinand agreed to end the Inquisition once and for all. In 1834, the Inquisition was officially dismantled by his wife. Ferdinand died the year before and the reign of fear was finally over. The last victim of the Spanish Inquisition was a schoolteacher called Cayetano Ripoll, who was hanged for heresy in July 1826. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Catholic Inquisitions, check out our book, The Inquisition, A Captivating Guide to the Medieval, Spanish, Portuguese, and Roman Inquisitions. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.